you've waited long enough. It's time to treat yourself. Visit European Wax Center, where you get the best by the best. Bikini waxing is their particular specialty. They wax over 7.5 million bikinis a year. With numbers like those, you know you're getting the best bikini service from the true bikini wax specialists. In fact, European Wax Center is so confident you'll love their services that they offer all first-time guests their first wax free. Head to waxcenter.com to book your reservation today. That's waxcenter.com to book your reservation today. And remember, your first wax is free. Today is Tuesday, June 29, 2021. On this day in 1978, Hogan's Heroes star, actor Bob Crane, was found dead in his apartment. Welcome to Today in True Crime, a Spotify original from Parcast. Due to the graphic nature of this case, listener discretion is advised. This episode includes discussions of violence and murder that some people may find offensive. We advise extreme caution for children under 13. Today, we'll discuss the unsolved murder of Hollywood actor Bob Crane. Let's go back to June 29, 1978, at the Winfield Place apartment complex in Scottsdale, Arizona. It was early in the morning when a neighbor who lived near apartment 132A was awoken by loud voices and the sounds of arguing. But groggy and not sure whether or not to be concerned, the neighbor soon fell back to sleep and didn't think anything of the disturbance. Several hours later, in the early afternoon, an actress named Victoria Berry pulled into the parking lot at the Winfield Place Apartments. She had made an appointment to see Bob Crane, the star of a dinner theater play they were in together titled Beginner's Luck. The day was hot, and being in the desert landscape of the American Southwest, the temperature was easily 100 degrees at that point. As she approached apartment 132A, she noticed the morning newspaper was still on the welcome mat. She picked it up to hand to Crane. Barry knocked at the door, but there was no response. She rapped again a little louder and still wasn't able to rouse Crane. Concerned, she tried the doorknob and found it unlocked. She slowly stepped into the apartment, closing the door behind her. It was almost completely dark inside, as Crane had hung blackout curtains all over the windows. Barry called out for her co-star, but heard no response. She crept further into the quiet home and found Crane's bedroom door ajar. She was unsure of what she should do, but ultimately decided to enter the room. She likely assumed Crane was just asleep. In the darkness, she thought she perceived long black hair streaming down from the head of whoever was lying on the mattress. She thought she might have walked in on one of Crane's many conquests. But soon, to her horror, she realized what she was really seeing. It wasn't hair streaming down from the bed, but dark blood and gore. The wounds were so extensive that she didn't even recognize Crane until she noticed his expensive French watch still hanging from his wrist. Barry backed away from the horrible sight and ran screaming from the apartment. After neighbors came to her aid, the Scottsdale police were called to the scene. Investigators found that Crane's skull had been smashed with a heavy, blunt object, leaving two large wounds just above his left ear. Shockingly, there was also an electrical cord from a video camera tied around his neck. Blood and tissue splattered the wall and ceiling by the bed. Crane's pillow was sodden with gore. There were marks on the sheets where a blood-soaked object had been wiped clean. A successful Hollywood star had been violently murdered, and the police had no idea who was responsible. Coming up, we'll learn more about Bob Crane, including the lurid second life he hid from the public. 
Every so often, something so impactful happens, it has the power to capture the attention of a whole country. An event so deadly or dumbfounding, it has no choice but to live on in infamy. Hi, Parcasters. It's Ashley Flowers, and I'm exposing the most sinister cases from the darkest corners of the globe in my new true crime limited series, International Infamy. Every Tuesday, come along as I guide you on a wicked world tour. 15 different countries, 15 infamous crimes. Take a trip to Iceland where six people confessed to a murder that never actually happened. Journey to Mexico where a Lucha Libre wrestler moonlights as a serial killer. And travel to New Zealand where two friends hatch a deadly plan to become famous. Each episode of International Infamy explores the twists and turns of a notoriously high-profile case, zeroing in on the cultural details which make the crime unique to its location, and explaining why it couldn't have happened anywhere else. Follow my new Spotify original from ParCast, International Infamy with Ashley Flowers, and catch a new episode every week. Listen free on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. These are stressful times. You already have a lot of responsibilities, but one of those responsibilities is to yourself. Self-care is important, so treat yourself with a bikini wax at European Wax Center. European Wax Center is the country's leading wax experts. They'll take extra special care of you and help you to feel your best inside and out. The secret? Their signature comfort wax. It's a proprietary blend of beeswax sourced from Europe, along with other skin-soothing ingredients that allow for easier hair removal and a less painful experience. You'll get the best service from the true bikini wax specialists at European Wax Center. Their certified wax specialists are expertly trained in prepping, protecting, and pampering your skin. They're so confident that you'll love their services that they offer all first-time guests their first wax for free. Still unsure? Because safety and security have always been paramount. European Wax Center has added enhanced health and hygiene measures for extra confidence and care. What do you have to lose, other than some hair? Head to WaxCenter.com to book your reservation today. That's WaxCenter.com to book your reservation today. And remember, your first wax is free. Now back to the story. On June 29, 1978, the corpse of 49-year-old Bob Crane was found in the bed of his Scottsdale apartment. Crane was well known for playing the affable and clever Colonel Robert Hogan in the 1960s sitcom Hogan's Heroes. The comedy series took place in a World War II prisoner of war camp. Hogan was the handsome, wisecracking American hero who always outsmarted his bumbling Nazi captors. The likable actor had previously won small roles on The Dick Van Dyke Show and The Twilight Zone. He took his craft seriously and studied with the famous Stella Adler in 1964 before landing the starring role on Hogan's Heroes. But after six years of Hollywood fame, in 1971, the show was canceled. Crane would never again reach that level of success. He took a few guest star gigs on other programs and also launched a failed pilot for his own project, The Bob Crane Show. As his TV acting career faltered, he turned to touring dinner theater gigs to pay the bills. He bought the rights to a play called Beginner's Luck and took it around the United States as director and star. By June of 1978, he was performing the play in Scottsdale's Windmill Dinner Theater. Wherever he was based while on the road, Crane's longtime friend John Carpenter, not to be confused with the famed director, met up with him. The two men shared an interest in womanizing and high-tech audiovisual equipment. The good-looking actor had no trouble scoring dates and often introduced Carpenter as his manager. In reality, Carpenter was a video equipment salesman. Crane's influence helped him meet women who might have otherwise been unavailable. The two men frequently double-dated or even engaged in menage a trois, filming their escapades to watch together later. 
Crane had a personal dark room in the bathroom of his apartment for developing intimate photos. He also kept an album of nude Polaroids of all the women he bedded. Carpenter's connections and expertise enabled Crane to preserve his encounters with the best tech available at the time. Carpenter took to scheduling business trips around Crane's touring schedule, while on a double date in a nightclub just days before Crane's murder, witnesses reported seeing the two men arguing. That testimony, combined with the fact that Crane's apartment didn't show any signs of forced entry, put Carpenter on the top of the suspect list for the Scottsdale police. The murder investigation lifted the lid on the tawdry secret life and rabid sexual appetites Crane and Carpenter shared. Crane's fans, who held him up on a pedestal, were utterly shocked and dismayed when they learned of his private predilections. His son, Robert Crane Jr., told AZ Central, to root for Colonel Hogan and then to find out about a second sordid life shocks and baffles people to this day. Everybody has secrets, but his went public in a big way. Crane's son believes his father had started to find Carpenter tiresome and obnoxious and had taken steps to dissolve their friendship. While there was no conclusive evidence directly tying Carpenter to the crime, some blood was found in his rental car. The sample was tested and found to be consistent with Crane's rare blood type. But more detailed analysis wasn't available in 1978, so it couldn't conclusively be shown to be Crane's. Scottsdale police didn't have any other suspects, but weren't able to get any charges to stick to Carpenter for many years. They finally arrested him and tried him for Crane's murder in 1994, where Carpenter was officially acquitted. Partly due to mismanagement of the crime scene by the police, there was still nothing concrete linking him to the slaying. The murder weapon itself, believed to have been a video camera tripod, has never been found. Nearly two decades after the murder, the blood found on Carpenter's car was retested using modern techniques for DNA matching. The results showed the evidence fit two distinct DNA profiles, one of which was from an unknown individual and the other was inconclusive. Despite this confounding fact, the court of public opinion continues to lean toward Carpenter as the only viable suspect. This may be partly due to the 2002 Paul Schrader film, Autofocus. The movie definitely leaves the viewer suspecting Carpenter in the end. While Crane was tragically taken too young, Hogan's Heroes is still in syndication, making people fall in love with the charismatic star to this day. His shocking murder is considered one of the great unsolved cases in American crime history. Thanks for listening to Today in True Crime. I'm Vanessa Richardson. You can find more episodes of Today in True Crime and all other Spotify originals from Parcast for free on Spotify. We'll be back with a brand new episode tomorrow in True Crime. Today in True Crime is a Spotify original from Parcast. It is executive produced by Max Cutler, sound designed by Juan Borda, with production assistance by Ron Shapiro, Trent Williamson, Carly Madden, and Bruce Kitovich. This episode of Today in True Crime was written by Christine Colby, with writing assistance by Terrell Wells, and fact-checking by Bennett Logan. I'm Vanessa Richardson. Hi, listeners, it's Ashley Flowers, and here's a quick reminder to check out my new True Crime Limited series, International Infamy. Every Tuesday, I'm taking you across the globe to look at 15 of the most notorious crimes from 15 different countries. Some stories are sure to shock, some may leave you stumped, but all are quite the trip. Follow my new series, International Infamy with Ashley Flowers. Listen for free on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Hi, everyone. Here's an important update about the show. Starting in August, Today in True Crime is moving exclusively to Spotify. So to ensure you don't miss out, all you have to do is download the Spotify app for free and search Today in True Crime. Give our show a follow and start enjoying. That's it. Thank you for listening to Today in True Crime. Your loyalty means everything to us. We look forward to seeing you exclusively on Spotify starting in August.